As crews continue work on SpaceX's Block 2 Starships, testing continues for a booster catch attempt, Ship 31 is fired up at the Massey Outpost for a static fire test, and Starhopper gets a makeover. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting things off this week at the launch complex, construction crews were installing pipes at the second tower as workers spent their Friday installing the tower's propellant and gas handling systems. At the build site, two sets of double doors were installed at the new Star Factory entrance by the front gate. A new heat exchanger unit was unloaded at Sanchez. These devices are used to chill down the oxygen and methane propellants with liquid nitrogen. Saturday saw Ship 31 undergo a partial cryoload at the Massey Outpost, with the frost line appearing at the liquid oxygen tank before loading was stopped and the ship was detanked. The first of Ship 33's aft flaps was raised upright for installation in Mega Bay 2 on Sunday, then swung over to the workstation with the waiting starship. On Tuesday morning, workers began cutting the weathered and beaten decorative exterior panels off of Starhopper's tanks. Back in 2019, the underlying 12mm stainless steel plates that make up Starhopper were covered up to make the test article look more like a finished starship. Booster 12's hot staging ring was brought out of the yard area and set down in front of Mega Bay 2 as crews worked to complete preparations on the ship and booster for Flight 5. Late in the evening, Ship 33's second aft flap was raised upright ahead of installation. The flap was raised tile side towards the camera before being rotated around to the work stand inside the bay. The folding floor panels on the center work platform in Mega Bay 2 were raised upright. A holding cart used for ship aft sections was rolled away from the Mega Bay on Wednesday and returned to Star Factory to be rotated back into the production line. After spending the night in the ring yard, Booster 12's hot stage ring was also taken into Star Factory. Back at the launch site, crews continued to remove the exterior paneling from Starhopper, working their way around Hoppy and cutting panels away from bottom to top. By 10 a.m., the work was all but complete. After missing their initial turn and turning around at the launch site, a segment of the Tower 2's ship quick disconnect arm was spotted moving up Highway 4 and passing the build site before being pulled into Sanchez. A concrete pump truck began placing their floor at the latest part of the Star Factory expansion, building out the space between the office and the factory building. Over at the Massey Outpost, the propellant storage facility was activated and began loading Ship 31 with propellants with frost lines forming on the ship's propellant tanks. One hour later, with a full tank of liquid oxygen and a partial load of fuel, Ship 31-6 Raptor engines lit up, kicking out billowing clouds of steam before shutting down. Thursday morning began with a booster transport stand rolling out of Sanchez and heading down Highway 4 to the build site before being set down in the ring yard. Starship 34's payload base section was rolled out of the Star Factory and into the high bay as assembly work began. Ship 34 is the second version 2 Starship following Ship 33. With the old outer panel stripped off, Starhopper was given a cleaning, scouring away years of dirt and detritus with a pressure washer. The ship quick disconnect arm was swung out on Tower 1 as workers prepared for the delivery of Booster 12 to the launch site. Making use of a knuckle boom crane, pallets of materials, possibly drywall, were lifted into the office building and set down inside. Ready and waiting to take Booster 12 to the launch pad, the booster transport stand in the ring yard outside Star Factory was brought into Mega Bay 1. And after more than a week of reconfiguration work to remove the luffing jib, the Saren CC8800 was raised. The crane's next task will likely be installing the ship quick disconnect arm and the chopstick carriage. A telehandler picked up the hot staging ring load spreader and drove it out of the build site down Highway 4 and out to the launch complex. Workers began removing the weather station from Starhopper, starting with the upper lattice section. 
In a novel view off the reflections on Star Factory's windows, Ship 34's payload section was lifted onto the turntable in the high bay. Starbase teams continued their Flight 5 preparations with another series of chopstick tests. The lifting and catch arms raised to the top of the tower on the port side, and once there, the starboard arm was opened. The landing rails were then raised up, and the arms began performing simulated booster catches. Several tests were performed, giving SpaceX detailed performance information for the system. The lower half of the weather station mast was removed from the Starhopper around noontime, leaving Hoppy looking closer to the appearance back in the early days of flight testing. Once the catch simulations were finished, the chopsticks began to descend. The arms were rotated to the port side of the tower and lowered down to the hard stop at the base. The landing rails on the chopstick arms were then lowered down. The nose cone for Ship 34 was relocated from Star Factory to the high bay for integration. Ship 34's nose cone has fewer dents and imperfections than Ship 33's, suggesting manufacturing systems and equipment are being dialed in at Star Factory. Inside Mega Bay 1, Booster 12 was taken off of the work stands and brought over to the transport stand as workers prepared for its trip to the launch site. Work crews outside the launch site continued to remove the mast equipment from Starhopper, with the last segments coming off the legs in the afternoon. Booster 12 then exited Mega Bay 1 in the evening, stopping just outside the bay with its grid fins in rotated positions. The grid fins were individually straightened out into their neutral positions ahead of rollout to the launch pad. The hot stage ring for Flight 5 joined Booster 12 at the entrance to Highway 4. The hot stage ring rolled out first, beginning the journey to the launch complex just before midnight, with Booster 12 following right behind it. This week at the Cape, Signet Warhorse 1 towed Just Read the Instructions out to sea on Friday to support the Galileo FM-26 and FM-32 mission for the European Space Agency. Booster 1083 finished its stay at the Port Canaveral docks on Monday and was laid horizontal for the journey to Roberts Road for refurbishment. Booster 1085 and its associated second stage were brought to the Space Launch Complex 40's integration hangar where it would be joined with the Galileo satellites. The Galileo mission successfully lifted off on Tuesday with Falcon 9 lofting the two navigation satellites to medium Earth orbit. Support ship Shannon returned to port on Wednesday, bringing home Dragon capsule resilience from the Polaris Dawn mission. Signet Warhorse 3 brought a short fall of Gravitas back to Port Canaveral after receiving maintenance at dry dock. The landing barge should be good to go for many more flights to come. Go Cosmos brought back both fairing halves from the Bluebird Block 1 launch, making the return to Port Canaveral six days after its launch date. Space Perspective's MS Voyager had a ceremonial return at Port Canaveral on Thursday, being welcomed back after completing their first high-altitude flight and their first return of their Neptune capsule. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.